The ecological model of health is really a key model that we use in health promotion. And what it does is it looks at the environmental factors from proximal to distal that affect individual health and health behaviors. And what it argues is that we are affected by our environments. Think of ecological, think of environments. And our environments are our friends and families, they're in our schools and our workplaces, they're in the cultures, values, and norms of our environment. And of course, our environment is also influenced by public policy as well. Okay? And these things change, and as, as let's say your friends change, or the community you live in changes, um, or your workplace change, those changes affect our health because the settings we live in and the things we encounter affect our behaviors and our well-being. Okay, so it's not enough to just like tell people what to do to be healthy, but again, we wanna create the settings, again, from proximal to distal and distal to proximal that are going to make it easier for people to increase control over their health and to improve their health. Okay, so like I said, the ecological model, it accounts for all of these more distal factors and environments that affect our health and well-being. And the main focus with this model is how the environment shapes behavior. Okay, and this model is good for a health promoter because it's like, huh, where do I want to make a difference? Am I going to focus at the individual level, the interpersonal level? Am I going to focus at the community? Am I going to focus on public policy? And you'll notice just when you look at that model that as the spheres become more distal, they're kind of, they, they encompass more. They have more of an influence, influence inwards, right? Individuals, we can, ourselves, we can just kind of affect ourselves and those close to us. Okay. However, if we make differences at these more distal levels, or what we call top-down approaches, these are going to make a bigger difference um, as far as health goes. Okay. So I'll give you an example, and I'll go through each of these different spheres of influence as far as the ecological model. I'll use the example of mask wearing, which is very uh, uh, topical right now given given COVID. Okay. So a health promotion strategy that was focused on the individual level with respect to mask wearing would be typically about communicating like knowledge and skills, right? So knowledge, attitude, and skills, right? So for instance, in this video from uh, Healthy Canadians, it talks about how to wear a mask properly, okay? That's an example of an individual level intervention because what we're trying to do, we're not going into a community, we're not talking about your friends and family, we're just trying to educate you about what you need to know about wearing a mask. Okay, so another example at the same level is that you should wear a mask, but this one is how you can wear it properly. Okay, at the interpersonal level, um, our friends and our family and our social networks, these also affect our behavior. So for instance, our friends and family can make a difference in our attitudes towards things. So here's something my friend posted. So report about the anti-mask protests in Vancouver today, heard on 7.30 a.m. while driving out to Chilliwack to safely wave at my mom through a window because you know, I care about others' health to not be stupid and selfish. A pathetic turnout for a pathetic cause. That's news reporting I can get behind. Okay, what's the point of this? The point of this is to show that people's attitudes towards things are communicated outwards and our friends and family and how they, they feel about things affects our behaviors. So if all of our friends and family are in favor of wearing a mask, you know, we're probably going to do it. If all of our friends and family are against it, we're probably not going to do it. Okay, so the, this is an example of someone that's very <laughs> pro-mask, right? That's trying to communicate or maybe shame people a little bit into wearing a mask by saying how stupid it is not to wear a mask, okay? But again, it shows that, that interpersonal level of influence. At the organizational levels, schools, workplaces, etc., can make decisions that affect our behavior. So for instance, SFU asks that all visitors wear masks. They're asking, they're not telling us. They're saying that we should, but they're not enforcing it and they're not making it mandatory, okay? However, UBC, down the road from us, um, says that masks will not be mandatory on campus this fall, okay? So if we're trying to get people to wear a mask, 
Okay, we can educate them about them. That's more at the individual level. We can get their friends and family to make a difference or to influence them, or we can create community uh, organizational environments where that is mandatory. At the community level, again, the the influence of that community can affect our behaviors. So, for instance, and it, with masks, it kind of goes both ways. There, you know, I'm in Montreal right now, and like according to this headline, thousands rally in downtown Montreal to protest Quebec's mandatory mask rules. Okay, so this is a group of people that are against masks that are organizing themselves to try to make a bigger influence at the community level. Conversely, there is this group of medical professionals that came together uh, to advocate for Black Lives Matter, and you'll notice that everyone is wearing a mask. They're very pro-mask people. So if you're in this environment, I think it'd be really hard not to wear a mask because everyone in the community you currently find yourself in, you know, is saying that that is an important thing, right? That's affecting our values. That's affecting people's beliefs around these things. So if we want people to wear a mask, if we build communities where everyone thinks that that's a good thing, you know, that's going to have an influence on individuals. And the converse is also true. But like I mentioned, the sphere that often has a huge influence is public policy. So if you want people to, if you want to absolutely guarantee that people wear a mask, sometimes you got to write it into policy. Sometimes you got to say you absolutely have to. Okay, but then how do you enforce that? How do you actually make sure that happens? Well, certain countries, for instance, are pretty good at controlling their population. So I was actually living in Colombia for part of the quarantine from March to March to June 2020, and they had a mandatory countrywide quarantine where if you leave the house on your on your non day because you're only allowed out certain days, you would have a huge fine. A fine that was like three hundred and fifty dollars, which is actually one month's minimum salary in in Colombia. Okay, and if you're caught out without a mask, this fine is similar. So you best believe everyone is wearing a mask because they're really good at controlling their people, and there's a huge fine if you don't. We don't have that in Canada. Now you could argue that's a good thing or a bad thing depending on how you look at it, right? So some people say, well, I don't want the government telling me what to do and what not to do. So the governments can have huge influence on people, but they also need people to want those changes in order for them to actually make those laws. So here in Canada, we don't have mandatory mask laws. And quite honestly, I don't really see them happening either because that would require a lot of social capital. You'd, you'd have to have a lot of people that were pro-mask. You'd need a lot of communities like that are really, really pro-mask to build up enough social and political capital to actually make a law to mandate it. Because it's really hard to make laws that that restrict people or force people to do things. People don't like that. Okay, So although it's effective, it's actually hard to make changes at the public policy level. So that's kind of a summary of the ecological model. And remember, this looks at how our environments from like more proximal environments to distal environments and public policy, how those make a difference on our particular behaviors, our health related behaviors. And then again, you as a health promoter, you might want to start thinking about where you want to make a difference. What's your sphere of influence? Are you someone that wants to work in government and set healthy public policy? Or are you someone that wants to work one on one people to make a difference in their lives? Okay, and like I said, as we go more distally, we have a chance to influence more people, but it's a lot harder <laughs> at those higher levels. Okay, so in the next two models, we're going to kind of build on the ecological model and again, talk about how we can use these to make a difference in people's lives.